So today we're going to continue learning about tile sets and more about how to interact with your auto tiles. So if you remember, the player can go behind this cliff and it can't go into the water. And what I've added is you collide and you can't go through this bottom rock unless you approach it with the rope. So you're climbing up the rope and you can go all the way to the top with the water, you ignore it, and then you come back down. If you noticed, I haven't shut off the shader yet for the visibility behind the cliff when you are in front of the cliff. And the reason for that is I have plans to overhaul the code a little bit in the structure of this game. It'll be easier to do then. So just so you understand how to use this video, I'm using these as simple examples to show you how the functions of the tile map and the auto tiles work. But in the process, the game's going to get fairly convoluted and confusing. Uh, some people say hacky. Hopefully it'll be a good example of why state machines are useful. I didn't really understand state machines until I built a game that was just very confusing and was able to see how the state machine made it a lot better. So I'm hoping to do that for you guys. So first let's go take a look at the tile set that makes this collision with the cliff possible. In the cliffs tile set we have these tiles. Right now they're only single tiles so nothing confusing. But if you look these top tiles do not have any collision to them, but the base of the cliff, all of these tiles have collision. You click this square, you click where you want the collision, you click to the next one, you click the square, you want, click where you want the collision, you, you can just continue that. Now I don't need two different collisions on the same tile map, so I'm going to delete my second ones. And just so you know, the cliffs are in the environment layer, and the player will interact with that. The player itself will run into the environment, so it has it in its mask. Now the new thing in the scene tree here is I actually added another area, 2D, so I have another node for another check to check to see if there's a ladder or a rope. I'm just going to be calling the rope a ladder, and so I make a area 2D, and I set its mask to the ladders, because we're checking to see if there are ladders. So that's, we have a ladders tile set, and we have its layer set to ladders. In this tile set, we have a rope, and this is actually an auto tile. I created the collision by clicking this polygon, and then you have to turn off the snapping, otherwise it's not going to work very well. It'll go straight to the corners, and you end up with the square, just like before. And then you click where you want your collision, and boom. Now I don't, again, I don't need another collision on the rope, um, so I'm going to delete that. So after setting those, we'll go to the player script. Now I've added a new variable called the onLadder variable to see if we are on a ladder. And we're going to skip through most of this to the very end where the signals happen. Just like before, we have a signal that's a body entered, body exited. So when we run into a rope, which will be the body, this body variable will be the tile set from the map because remember, we're colliding with the ladder's tile set, so that's what the body is going to be when it goes through the signal. So we're going to take that tile set, that's body, and we're going to world to map function the global position of the player. Remember, this is the player script, so we'll get the global position, and we're going to turn that position into a grid position in our tile set. After we have that position, we're going to check to see what type of tile it is. Now, to give a better visual of what's happening with this get cell auto tile coordinate, I actually went to my uh, map template, and this isn't necessary to make this happen. This is just an example to show what's happening. So every time that I click enter, or UI accept, we're going to, again, go to that tile map. This is where body is because this is the same idea. We're going to world to map where the mouse position is. We're going to take the mouse position and change it into a grid coordinate. And then I'm going to print what type of auto tile is at that position. So when we run the game, I will move this over so you can see the output. When I click here, you get 0, 0. You move up to the next section, you get 4, 2. And all of these are the same, so they're 4, 2. But when you get to the top where it's staked to the ground, you get 4, 1. So what do these mean? So if we go back to the tile set, 
Now the base of the rope was called zero, zero. That is this coordinate in the rectangle. Because remember you start from zero when you count in with, com with computers. And then the middle section of the rope was four, two. So we go zero, one, two, three, four and 0, 1, 2. And this was 4, 1, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 0, 1. So you can see which tile of the auto tile you're currently using at that position. So going back to the player, we're going to get the position of the player, check it against that tile set, and then if that tile is 0, 0, or the bottom of the rope, we will set the on ladder to true. And then we're going to change the Z index. So the Z index is right here. What that means is think of it like a, a deck of cards and the cards that are closer to you are higher numbers and the cards that are farther away from you are the lower numbers or even negative numbers. And in this instance, I took the relative off. So by default, it will be zero and most of my tile sets I just left at zero, and they are rendered in the order of the node tree. But the player I set to five to make sure it's always in front of like the ground or the castles. And then the cliffs I set to eight, and the ladders I set to nine. Now these really can be any numbers as long as then they're in the order that you want them. So I have the player behind, usually the cliffs, which is why we get this effect. And then when I am on a ladder, I move the Z index to 10, so I'm in front of the cliff and the rope. Now the last thing that happens when you get onto a ladder is you set the collision mask bit to false. And remember, this is the player, so we're setting the player collision mask to false so it doesn't collide with the environment, which is the cliffs. And see, that's bit number two. And then when you exit the ladders or the ropes, we just undo everything that we talked about. Uh, we set the on ladder to false, we return the Z index to five, and we turn that bit mask on to true, that way we collide with that base of the cliff again. I'm planning on having one more video on how to walk around on the top of the cliff, because right now that does that isn't really working. Uh, and then we'll probably have to change things into a state machine if things go as planned. If you're interested in that, please let me know. Or if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And I hope you learned something about tile maps today.